To celebrate our 20th season on the air, we're taking a look back at some of your favorite bath renovations for the past two decades. Well, the pieces have all come together to make this renovation complete. What do you think so far? Unbelievable. This year, Today's Homeowner is celebrating its 20th season on national television. So we thought it would be neat to look back at some of the more popular projects that we have featured over the years. Now that's a lot to squeeze in to just one show. So we're going to do several different episodes over the course of the season that'll spotlight some of the more popular projects. This week, we'll focus on bathroom renovation. Now, if you've watched us for very long, you know that the way we approach projects has evolved a bit over the years. In the early days, the camera crew tagged along with the guys from my construction company and documented the work they did in various people's homes. You know, I love the framing stage on any project because you can really see a lot of things taking place in a hurry. You got to see innovative projects and some pretty cool transformations. What we're building is a sunroom, 12 feet by 22 feet. And we'll show you this from start to finish in this week's show. But it was really more of a contractor story than a homeowner's. So we began to feature smaller projects where the homeowner took a little more active role in the process. And our guinea pig for the new format was my daughter, Chelsea. So I had just graduated from college and was working on the show as a production assistant. At the same time, I was buying my very first house and dad wanted to document the whole process, which included some serious renovations. And one of those renovations was our bathroom, and I only had one, so we only had one shot to get it right. You know what that is right there? Check this out. They, you know, the old timey razor blades mm -hmm. that you would dispose of? Uh, they dropped them down in there. What's wrong with the trash so, can? Uh, razor blades! <laughs> you know, I love working with Chelsea, but I never really considered how free she would be when she speaks her mind. You finally told the truth on something, Dad. You didn't make it up. Hush, that's not right. <laughs> By doing the demolition ourselves, we were able to save money on Chelsea's bath renovation. But before we started, we made sure that both the power and the water are turned off so no one would get any surprises. Then we made sure to be careful with any fixtures that would be reused. Bathroom demolition isn't always pleasant, but it does give you a better understanding of how things work in your home. Go get your little cup and scoop out the rest. I'm kidding. That's gross, that's gross. Once we made sure we wouldn't damage any plumbing within the walls, we could be more ruthless with the things that we didn't want to save. Like that old cast iron tub. Yeah, there we go. It was too large and too heavy to get out of the room in one piece. For most homeowners like Pat and Stephanie, demolition is a little less intense. Patrick and I removed wallpaper in um, the kitchen of our first home, and it came off in about one inch strips. <laughs> and we very quickly learned that he and I were not good at home improving together um, for fear of, of divorce. So this will be a true test of our marriage, I think, if we can get in here this weekend and do the bathroom. But this time, they got the whole family involved, and it seemed to work. They got all of the demolition done in one weekend without the help of a marriage counselor. But new homeowners Paul and Jessica Golden had by far the most interesting wallpaper removal story. Okay, here's the bathroom right here. All right. But I'm going to warn you before you go in. Uh-oh. We bought the house for my aunt and uncle, and they must have been in the middle of a bathroom renovation because the wallpaper's down, but their teenagers have made some of their own art on the walls. Oh, is that right? Yeah, we definitely yeah, want to paint. Strip the wallpaper and then paint, definitely. Even though I kind of like the artwork, uh, we got to get rid of it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you'll see for oh, this yourself. Oh, this should be pretty interesting. Let me take a look at it. Oh. <laughs> that was the first one for me, and probably the most unconventional approach to bathroom decorating I've ever seen. First thing I think about is we could take like a clear polyurethane and just go right over this so that you can save all of this. Yeah, that's a possibility. Paul, what do you think? Yeah, we could do that or we could paint over it and get rid of the <laughs> wallpaper. <laughs> Besides the graffiti wallpaper, the popcorn ceiling also had to go. Just spray a little bit more right through here. Where? <laughs> right Where? through here. You're about to lose all spraying privileges. Come down here and take it from me. 
Try to get a little bit more on the ceiling and less on me. Sorry. You couldn't really fault these guys for trying to have a little fun, though. Scraping a ceiling is a tedious, messy job. But when we helped David and Tiffany England scrape their bathroom ceiling, we found a tool that captured most of the mess. And with only one good hand, David managed to work quicker than Alan. Yeah, this is really coming off easy. Sure, rub it in. <laughs> Mine's almost done, Alan. What about yours? No comment. <laughs> All right, I got mine done. What about you? Um, man, I am so close. <laughs> I am so close. <laughs> close to leaving. <laughs> Come on. This is awful. I thought you were supposed to be a professional. Oh, <laughs> well, it is actually. It's actually coming off. Yeah, I'm actually getting a, a flat surface in a lot of areas, so it'll huh. take a little extra time, but we'll get it. Obviously, we've spent some time taking bathrooms apart over the years. Stick around to see how well we can put them back together. Go to any hardware store or home center and you'll find plenty of painting tools designed for painting in tight spaces. But when I always had to paint the wall behind this balustrade, I couldn't find any that worked for me. The trim rollers are too fat and they got stuck behind the railing. And the painting pads had this bent handle that made it impossible to fit into the spaces behind the newel post. So, what I did is I took the painting pad and I modified it using a painting stick. This is a stir stick you get at any paint store. And I trimmed the edges with a knife so that it would fit. I wedged it right into the channel on each side of the painting pad. Now I ended up with the most narrow, thinnest painting stick available. And I see it fit, the pad fit perfectly behind the top of the newel post. So I can apply paint there. Even down here, which would have been impossible to paint any other way and it fit behind the railing, no problem. There's about an inch of space, so the pad could fit from the top or bottom. And of course, it would also fit behind the balustrade. So, and the great thing about this is, the pads cost just a few cents a piece, and the sticks themselves are free. Hello, and welcome to the show this week. This week, we're celebrating our 20th season on the air by revisiting some of your favorite bathroom projects from the past. Now, the layout calls for both his and her closets. This being his, and this being hers. Seems to always work out that way, doesn't it? We've already seen a couple of homeowners who had to remove old wallpaper. That's a pretty common theme in many bathroom renovations. Oh, wow. I have never, ever seen this wallpaper before. Oh, my God. I've got to take a picture of that. And I thought my wallpaper was done. But the worst discovery is that you've damaged the drywall in the process of removing the wallpaper. Okay, I assume this was not you. I assume this was Pat that got a little aggressive over oh, here. all the areas that are ripped off were that Pat Green. Yes. Okay, all right. Well, we're going to repair his problems here. Oh, yes. I always have to clean up after him. So here's all you have to do. Okay, you take a little bit of this, just like that, and then apply it like that, and then just pull it across it like that. See what I mean? How you get this? Danny, that looks like putting on my makeup in the morning. <laughs> All right. Whatever you might relate it to, give it a try. So. Okay, you just got to slap it on. Yeah. You know, I really hate finishing drywall, but that's pretty much a part of any bathroom remodeling I've ever done. But one thing I hate even more than spreading the joint compound is sanding it. You see why we have the dust mask on, huh? Yeah. Man, you're pretty good at that. You better go behind me and check in case I'm missing I think I'm going to go take a break. <laughs> of course, another surface that's commonly changed in bathroom projects is tile. Floor tile, tub surround tile. People love this stuff, but they don't always love the process of installing it. It's taken a whole lot longer than I thought it would, and that's frustrating. You know, I mean, you know how patient I am. Right, it very. just comes naturally to me but I think it's looking really good. I thought there was a possibility we finished the shower and the floor. Oh, yeah, in the same night. And about, <laughs> yeah, about nine I mean, o'clock at night, I said, well, I don't think we're gonna hit the floor yet, but I'm pleased so far. Yes, and I'm gaining some confidence. Well, I think the tile looks great, but what kind of grout did you decide to go with? Um, it's kind of a light color. Well, I'll tell you what, it's not easy matching tile to a countertop like that. You did pretty good on this. It's so hard, but it does, it just ended up looking really good. But sometimes we're matching new tile to old tile, like Tiffany's project where she removed a shower door that left holes in the shower tiles. 
Uh, what we want to do is, is decide which tile we want to pull out, but here's the challenge, and this is why I'm glad you're here, because I don't want to make this decision. Oh. If you notice, they started with a partial tile. Yeah. There's a full tile here, so nothing you do is going to match up. My whole house is crooked. Yeah. Well, if you take a shower <laughs> like this, it'll be fine. Everything looks good. So in addition to the damaged tiles, she marked some other random ones, all of which were removed so they could be replaced with a contrasting color to give the surround some new life. Put it on and give me some ridges like that. Okay. And that's buttering it. I got to tell you, I'm tickled to death. I love it. It looks good. And I like the pattern that Tiffany finally agreed on. Okay, last one. It was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be, and I, you know, I kind of look forward to tackling and tackling the other bathroom. Vanities also make a big difference in the look of a bathroom. Most powder rooms tend to be a little fancier than other bathrooms in the house, and the homeowner had that same idea in mind here with the design for the front of the vanity. But when Chelsea set out to help Anissa Arnold upgrade her peeling cabinets, she really had a challenge. Wow. Hey there. Got a lot going on. Yeah. I noticed that it's not actually paint on here, it's a coating. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is just kind of sand the transitions where it's peeling, prime the bare wood, and then just you spray paint and smooth over. Oh, I like that. It's quick. The melamine coating on this vanity is really thin, so it made it easy to feather it out to the bare wood with some fine grit sandpaper. If you don't mind turning on the vent fan, though, I'm not sure which switch it is. We decided to spray on the bonding primer to eliminate any brush strokes, but that did require some ventilation and a respirator. After that, a couple of light coats of semi-gloss paint, and then we were able to re-glue the loose edges of the melamine wrap drawers. One of the biggest challenges I've ever had in installing a vanity was in my own house. My wife wanted me to remodel my youngest daughter's bathroom. What she wanted is to remove an existing pedestal sink and replace it with this beautiful furniture style vanity. Well, we had to tear down a linen closet, we had to fill in some floor voids, had to relocate a water supply line before my carpenter Mark could help me install this gigantic vanity. And this is the bath vanity that started the whole project. My wife and daughter found this online, thought it was perfect. It's been sitting down in the garage for about three weeks, so I'm glad we're finally trying to get it in position. But that's the next challenge, trying to get this big cabinet in that small door. Ready, Mark? Yep. All right. All right, Danny, we gotta be easy now. You picked a bad time to drop by. Let's come this way, all right? Oh, yeah. Good, doesn't it? No scars. No damage to the walls. Mm -mm. Yeah. You got your plumbing tools? No, sir. Oh. Not a plumber. Right. It's called a plumber. You know, I thought I had hit pay dirt when I saw that Bear had come out with a paint and primer in one a few years ago. This was great because it saved us painters time and especially money. And that's really important. But you know, the downside of that though is that it only came in a few sheens, obviously because it's got primer in it and primer is flat. So I think the most you could get at the time was satin. Don't quote me on that. However, things have changed now. Fast forward to today and look what Bear has done. They've now come out with a paint and primer in one, but now it's available in a high gloss enamel. That is fantastic for a number of reasons. First of all, it's gonna give you that high gloss sheen that you're looking for in a high gloss, obviously. Uh, it does clean up with water, so it's a nice enamel look without all the oil mess. Also with this, it's got a mildew resistance in it, so it's perfect for locations like your bathroom or your kitchen or even your mudroom because it's gonna create a nice shell over that surface to protect it. So now you can get a high gloss look and get the time, the ease, and saving of the money with a paint and primer in one. This week we're taking a look back at some of the past bath projects you liked as we celebrate our 20th season on the air. We're creating a new master bathroom in an area where two existing bathrooms are. We've already looked at several of the elements these projects have in common, but come on, it's a bathroom show. You can't forget the toilet. We have to get rid of all of as much of this water as we possibly can. So, Do I need to get a straw? No, 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 no. <laughs> We're gonna do it much more humane than that. Okay. How'd you make it do that, Danny? It's like Vacuum. magic. It's, it's physics. Might be a too, little too elevated for the typical homeowner tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>
You should never step in the middle of the toilet seat. You should always step on the rim. Uh, you know, our bathroom is rather small and I was trying to reach over and help scrape the ceiling and uh, stepped in the middle and broke it. Of course, faucets are also a part of most of these projects and sometimes they just don't work like they're supposed to. So all of our washers that have come out so far look good and these washers look like they're in good shape. Okay. The only thing I've noticed, just a tiny, tiny bit, is the spring that's in here uh -huh. is a little bit compressed. But that may have, just a little spring may have been the problem. Uh -huh. Huh? Well, interesting. I had no idea that all this stuff was in my faucet, by the way. <laughs> that one is kind of amazing. Uh, I felt like it just kept coming. I hope you took notes of how we took it apart, because you're going to have to put it back together. <laughs> we can do it. Which end do you want to go in the wall? The right end. <laughs> Of course, we've changed out our share of mirrors, too. All right, let's don't, we got this far, let's don't break it now. You good? I'm good. Follow me. <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> let's see how we want to get this thing in here. Um, we can center it between the cabin and the wall, center it on the faucet, or center Wait, it on the light fixture. Perfect timing, mommy. Oh, oh, boy. Let me show you what Jessica picked uh -oh. out. Okay, that is a mirror. So we've got a little electrical work to do, a little okay. trim work to do, but when it's finished, it really won't take that long. This is going to look awesome. Yeah, I think it's going to look great. We started by dry fitting the bottom piece of trim and the mirror so that we could mark the holes for the lights and cut out the drywall where the new boxes and wiring would go. Then we attached the pre-painted wood trim around the border. The spacers behind it gave us room for a molding that helped this adhesive secure the mirror. This time when it went in, it was there to stay, and once we capped it off with some matching crown molding, it was ready for the boss's approval. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay. All right, that's the way we'll go with awesome. it. Awesome, I love All right. it. All right, good. We'll have it finished here in just a little bit. We'll even put up a couple lights for the heck of it. Awesome, I appreciate <laughs> okay. it. But then sometimes it's as easy as adding a simple frame to an existing mirror. Go up a little bit higher. Yeah, there you go. Okay, now slip it down and just let it sit right on top. Oh, that's gonna look so nice. pretty cool, isn't it? This kit was a great solution for Jackie because she simply chose the style and finish she wanted for the frame and gave them the dimensions of her mirror. Then all we had to do was secure the frame to the mirror with the self-adhesive tape on the back of the frame. Oh, you've got it all. Look at that, that, that one. we're done. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right, now, the thing is, when we put it back in this time, don't touch the mirror, because once we stick it, we won't be able to move it. Okay. So let's just don't go up. Touch. Down the bottom, I'm actually touching right here. Okay. Move it over a little bit. Like okay. Little... okay all right, I think, all right, I think we're ready to push it. Make sure it doesn't slip off the bottom. Hold it there. Then go ahead and push in. There we go. And then don't, don't push hard, hard, but let's just try to seat it. And that is it. What do you think about that? It's unbelievable. I think I love it. In case you missed these projects, we dug out of the archives the first time around, or you've simply forgotten how they turned out. Here are some of the before and after comparisons to get you caught up. We've shown you some of the elements these projects shared, but the one thing they all had in common was dedicated, energetic homeowners with a vision for making their homes the better place. I'm guessing that describes you as well, and that's why you're here watching us each week. So we want to say thank you for inviting us into your home each week for the past 20 years. Sure, what we do is a job, but we enjoy it so much because of homeowners like you. Hey, thanks for being a part of it. We're looking forward to another 20 years of helping you improve the place you call home.